Hello and welcome to Chicago Arts. This is Martin John. I'll be your host. This episode features Sabrina Chepajev, editor of Live Through This on Creativity and Self-Destruction. The purpose of this book is a couple of things. One of them, probably the most important one, is to sort of show the stories of women or just people that have dealt with self-destructive tendencies that have not had these tendencies define them. I think a lot of times for artists, uh, there's this, always this fine line between sort of sanity and art. Some people think that they have to be crazy to be an artist. Some people think that they have to live a very hard life to become an artist. And that there's that fine line between what you're living and, you know, what you're creating and how that becomes art. And a big part of this was to show that, yes, people have dealt with this, uh, but they've also, it isn't just their art. There is a craft beyond it. And they have not allowed their self-destructive tendencies to define them. Separate the romanticism. Oh, actually, a good uh, essay in terms of this uh, anthology is one by Eileen Miles, who's a sort of well-known novelist and poet. And she had written a lot about almost, in some ways, not meaning to, but romanticizing, like getting drunk. And, you know, a lot of her earlier work was about that. And I went to her because I said, I, I would love to have a story from you. But she didn't want to write on that anymore. She was like, I've written so much about that stuff, so much about, you know, me, you know, drinking. Well, I don't want to write anymore. So I came back to her and I said, well, can you please show us then what it is now that you've made that conscious decision to be a healthy artist? And what is living with that now? So I think I had a very good eye on not romanticizing this sort of either mania or self-destructive you know, self desires, but sort of understanding them. I think that um, romanticizing often comes up from not understanding them and just feeling like, oh, God, that's great. Look how free we are. But each of these women really exposes what it meant when they were either in their manic periods, in, in the wallows of, of depression. And I think that once you get an honest story, it can never be romantic. So. I think understanding why you're doing the thing allows you to not shame yourself in the cycle of it. You can't stop self-destructive behaviors. I'll keep on self-destructing in different ways, as will everyone else. But the trick is to allow it to happen, understand it, and also sort of feel some pride about it, about, not, not exactly pride, but um, understand the power that is inherent in it so that you can fuel it towards something else. Right. If I was talking to a 13-year-old girl right now, I would say, listen, you have this choice to go down this road, and if, that what you're, if that's what your life needs at this point, that's understandable. But somewhere down the end of this road, we're all going to be here waiting for you and waiting for you to join us and survive this so that, you know, you can tell your story. And live through this is going to be sort of your uh, passageway to understanding how to rein in the power of yourself as an artist and as a woman.